Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Horsemanship Remark Show. Bet you guys were wondering where I was this morning. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I have a lot of horsey things on my mind this morning, so hopefully you guys will dial right in and Michael hasn't forgotten me. Val, how's it going? How's everything going? Oh, my gosh. Here's... Michael Sparling. Michael Sparling, Horsemanship Pacific Northwest. Hmm. That's kind of interesting. Let's see. Let's see if we can add Michael. And I even have my iPad here, you guys. Susan, good morning. Uh, Corey, Jody, good morning. I wonder if Michael has whoop, watched the videos. Did you guys see the videos? So, so excited to show you the novella videos at Horsemanship Insider because... Um, you know, we've talked so much about Noah's arcs and used them for all sorts of different things, but it's so cool to be able to show you the novella ones because it's like, okay, that's, that is where I really originally found it. So I want to talk about balance and... Originally right. found it novella. No, you found it well before no. No, but just but but that's the sort of application in which I found it. So, yeah. Good morning. Say, what do you mean? Good morning. The application in which you found it. Yeah, with Vivian, just just oh. really de at developing a trot. So it was like a poofier trot. You know, and so to get to show you that in a way that it's like, okay, the horse is going and round and soft and like all those things. But now how does it apply? The only thing about Novella is that she's, she looks like it's easy. However, she was definitely running downhill, like maybe this time last year, I think. Did we talk about it? And so... I think we did talk about it because I was like, well, we talked about her kind of a little bit throwing herself up into the transition, into the trot transition or canter transition. Canter transition. Yeah, we're still so at Horsemanship Insider, we're still at the trot. In a couple of weeks, it'll be those canters. But um, do you remember when? Because she would go. Remember how long she would go at trot, and and then she'd kind of get going, and I didn't want to. You know, I didn't want her to misunderstand that it was like some reduction in energy or impulsion. And that was really, remember, I wasn't a hundred percent sure on that, but it really took one day of using the arcs to rebalance her to her hindquarters. But I didn't get a film that. Uh, we'll do that another time. She would have been, it's it, it's kind of a little bit hard to recreate her deal just because she's short and long neck and... Hard to what her deal? Recreate it. Oh. You know, just because she has kind of a very specific body style for that. So, and I do not think that Prim is going to be apt to go so low. Yeah, it's more upright. Yeah. Yeah. So what's on your mind? How, how did it go with the happy? Oh, uh, yours. I haven't worked there since Stephanie has been, oh, um, yeah, I, I should have done more to report back. But, that's uh, Good morning, Corey. Good morning, Susan. Um, I think the thing that I'm watching for more from that, although I, you know, the roll, the hindquarters, very much making sure it's connected to the rain and then rolling forward. It's the, is there a moment of emptiness or a moment of delay or a, like a, we're getting the hindquarters, but there's a little hard spot in there. And I was talking to Julie yesterday. It's kind of interesting how easy it is to fall into hindquarters going, stepping deep ish, you know, and they're coming off the rain, but they're 
coming off the rein and there's still a hard spot somewhere along the horse as they get there. So it's, I know, I'm, I know I'm supposed to move my hindquarters and I know I'm supposed to not lean on this rein, but I'm not committed to it rolling through my body as I feel the rein because I think largely because I'm just relying on the drive with either presence or flag or whatever, or even leg. Um, Which is move me over without, you know, and then on the other hand, you can have they follow the feel and it's in their neck so much and they're moving their hindquarters. So in both cases, you can have it like get stuck somewhere in between to where it's not, they're either coming off the rain and like super truly bendy light to the rain or the lead rope, but, but it's not, there's a, a spot where it doesn't go through the whole body. Completely connect to the hindquarters. There's like, there's like a disconnect or you can, and, and yet the hindquarters might be going, so you think you got it, right? And then the, in the other case, you know, the hindquarters might be going and there's a, a float in the rain, or yeah, there's even a bit of a float in the rain, but as they're going, there's this hard spot in there that they've just learned to roll the hindquarters with some resistance somewhere. And they're kind of like, I'm soldierly doing this because I know it's what I'm supposed to do. Um, so feeling for are they truly turned loose so to me the real challenge lately um uh -huh. I'm because i because i've seen it and felt it before it's just like uh being more particular consistently this is the a consistent expectation of that like every single moment every single time right it is kind of where my brain is but then to try to communicate that to a few people on Brody who very much does a little bit of both sometimes it's a lot in his neck but he kind of is curling up here and the hindquarters are going but it's and then the, the way, you know, you kind of want to address it is get your hindquarters more and drive more, but that's still not connecting the rope to the hind leg. So then you get on and you go, I'm going to bend. And he's, unless someone's kind of been able to follow through with their leg, often it doesn't take much if you just pick up the tail of your McCarty and give him a good swat once when he's kind of ignoring your leg that might be all it takes but he can take you know boom 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 and if someone's not really effective in how they're using their leg and he's already disconnected he's not really compelled to get connected he just he's like well they're bumping on me but there's That's no the fourth method yeah. or the third method right the yeah fourth method the fourth method reigns without legs yeah. And, yeah. And so kind of neither are working, but we have a bend and we kind of have the hindquarters moving. So, you know, you're a beginner. It's like, okay, you kind of got the right idea. But as you're getting on toward not being a beginner, um, you've been doing this for a while, you got some stuff going on. It's like, okay, we need to up level this to where you are. Um, well, you just have a higher expectation. You're going, I'm not settling for that because now I can see or feel something different and so um, <clears throat> you know when when we were talking about it I was like you you said something and I adjusted immediately because I knew how to do it and I you know it was it wasn't like I had to work on seeing it or work on yeah effectively communicating it I just needed to apply it in that moment Right, but to get someone yeah. who is probably ready for it to 
find the feel and timing there because there is a heck of a lot of feel and timing to it that you know i kind of just take for granted myself but to try to help someone kind of find come into that because it is a you know being pretty direct pretty strong pretty firm whatever you want to say to say come on i need a response off this but your timing has to be correct your release has to be like and you have to give them the opportunity and go are you gonna make it right yeah and it's such a it's a feeling thing. we should tell people exactly what we're talking about because <laughs> we are talking to ourselves <laughs> they, right they might not but side note i was just commenting to kip how blessed i feel that i have you guys that like everyone that's been riding with me and sharing this this deal where i can be the eyes on the ground or eyes on you know eyes from a distance and being able to say push the slack or a little bit rounder or roll the jaw or draw more or just any of those things that could just be generic random you know so when you say that you knew exactly what to do and how to do it and understood me and could apply it in that moment i just am so enjoying that <laughs> right now because because it's freaking cool like it's it, it's you know way down the line in terms of yeah. being able to to share and and help you know, on a level that's super, super fun. But let's tell the gang. Peggy is here. Good morning. Who else? A few people. Oh, Michelle. Good morning. Uh, so you want to tell? Because I was uh, playing with Prim the other day, just doing a little bit of groundwork with her. Just kind of move around and see. And, and that exact same thing came up now she doesn't have any preconceived ideas still talking about it without explaining <laughs> go ahead okay you can come back to prim in a second uh so uh della the fjord um i mentioned before she would going to the right just turn to the left she's not doing that so much but when you ask for more light particularly when you'd ask her to lope she'd just get rigid in her body and go into the rope she wouldn't necessarily pull it out of your hand she wasn't pulling to the outside or really trying to turn she wasn't even really counter bent but she would straighten and you know she's doing this too oh, right. soft feel is there but you have to say let's let's change our shape because the more <clears throat> forward we put in there the more inclined she is to just kind of bracing her under neck and stick her nose off anyway um so it's like this you know you send her up you roll the hind quarters and then you send her again you roll the hind quarters and it felt like okay we get that shape but then as soon as you send her again it was right back to straight and it wasn't connecting it wasn't carrying over to that transition into the lope anyway the trot was coming together um so you know stephanie was kind of frustrated with it i was working at it a bit we talked last week i um was flagging her from behind tying her to the wall it's um and that it helped on the one side the other side she it just wasn't coming through so i started sending her by leading her by <clears throat> and because i wasn't getting a bend to the right you know because that's the direction she doesn't keep the bend um it's a little bit harder for her to make that transition to the right without stiffening to the left it's a little better not great but better so tied her to the wall She'd bend to the left, wouldn't bend to the right. Leading her by, got that better because the angle was different and I could actually corner her and get a bend in both directions. But then we're back to 
So what? It's not carrying when we make the canner transition. So um, when we were talking, um, when you were watching what we were working on, um, I can't even remember what I started with. It was more like kind of trying to. Well, right away. I, right away, I was trying to kind of soften her rather than get this going. So it was off kind of right creating right. Close. Yeah, I'd come off the lead rope, but in a, you know, kind of creating a soft feel by getting in close and just kind of waiting on her to find that. And, you know, you can feel, if I'm just giving you enough information, description of hopefully you're following along to what that, what I mean by that, I was in kind of close to the halter, um, coming in more almost toward the shoulder, um, kind of like backing off the halter, except you're rolling forward, moving the hindquarters and waiting for them to give laterally and a bit longitudinally as they're moving. And you could wait for it to turn loose, but that still doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to come up the rope and keep the bend. All right, so it was, it was another piece. Anyway, that's what I started. And you're like, okay, do this. Okay, so I did that. And... Are you going to tell them what do this means or no? Well, yeah, that's what I'm going to tell right now. Oh, okay. okay. So I said do this. So what we did was center forward on the circle. <laughs> we stepped into the hind quarters, bring the leader up across your body toward the hind end. And... I don't know where the emptiness was because she wasn't really walking forward still. She was slowing the front feet. She was bending. It was just that little not completely connected. It wasn't major, but it was it was absolutely there. So again, you're not you don't know quite what totally connected looks like or what that feel and feel. Like. timing you know your your feel on the lead rope going through the whole horse when it's just right when they're right there what it looks like you could say oh yeah that's that's not bad she's bending she's moving her hind quarters she's not just ignoring you and walking off with her front feet and giving you a you know, whatever like it looked all right and then you're like you know corner which i've done how many times is essentially what it was. It was like she needed yes. to like... Yes, yes, yes. Except there were qualities in there that were way more important than the idea that she needed to yield the hind corners. Because you had that. Yeah. But getting those qualities for her required taking hold of the lead rope a little stronger and saying, no, this has got to go to your hind end a couple times. And, it, and, then, and then it was just offer it. And the quality it, it was like I said quite some time ago, I don't even remember what horse, where it was just, I had this, kind of aha moment as it's all taking place in front of me of going of course the horse has to do it right you can't make the horse do it okay you can kind of fabricate it you can kind of shape and shape and adjust and adjust and now the horse is kind of doing it but it's it's all artificial there's all stiffness there's all like just not connected. But when the horse makes the decision mentally to, to do, I, I don't know how to put it into words, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Like, well, liberty, working them in the round crawl is kind of, a good way to get at it a little bit because you can't manufacture as much. Yeah. You know, and that's where a, a few, we're kind of bouncing around, but a, 
a few weeks ago when the Up North crew was here and Val had been using the lariat, I said, all right, everybody throw your ropes on your, your horses and let's do the groundwork with that. And the response that is often there to tip the head to take the pressure off the feel on the lead rope was not a factor because now they weren't putting that feel on the nose. So you take everything off your horse, you're working in the round pen, they're not gonna be kinking their head because there's no feel there. They're going to be moving their own body in a more congruent way, right? So now apply that to their on the lead rope, but they're moving their body rather than you going, move this, move that. They're just right there they're gonna be lined up, they're gonna be straight, they're going to be connected. Why wouldn't they, if they've made the decision to do it in a way with you? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I mean, what you're saying- More connected, More right? connected, yeah. correct, yes, yes. Because it might still not be perfect balance, it might not be- Well, we've seen know. it could be pretty bad, honestly. Yeah. It could be pretty straight, pretty, tiny steps with the hind cord. We, we've seen it at Liberty be yeah. bad or, or, you know, not, nothing magical in terms of value other than they well, Let's say you have something going on, the horses, you know, and then you work them in the round curl enough that they are kind of mentally hooking on rather than just whipping hind cords away and facing you or really stiff and guarded, like, Using that example, it's more like you kind of have some stuff going on, but the horse is still kind of guarded in, you know, small ways, right? No, I don't know. Well, words are not yet as communicated super clearly, super quickly. And if we keep rambling around on it for an hour, it might come to a clearer, <laughs> more detailed explanation, but. Well, to me, The, the words that get used are that the rein has to connect to the hind leg and go through, through the whole body. So, you know, how many times, a million times over in dressage land, is a, th a throughness, right? A connection. A, and then in, in, in Buck Brandman slash Ray Hunt land, it's a turning loose, right? Okay. So to, to me, this is this, what you're saying about working a horse loose is of course true. There, there's no question about that. Particularly if, if you need to highlight, and sometimes I do too, you know, need to highlight in what way is the horse moving their own body? Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, let me be clear. If I take the lead rope off or if I, so what exactly is going to happen? sometimes mm -hmm. that is but the like with Della yeah with the fjord it was super obvious and this once again I was uh working with Prim the other day and the rain has to go through the, the signal has to go through the whole body or the feeling that's a better way to say it the feeling but the absence of feel is can be a pitfall. It's a little bit like the hacky sack thing. It's like, it's got to feel like it goes through the whole body. And it was cool to watch Della because you could see that she, there were tons of braces laterally, even though it looked like she was giving it the head and neck, even though the hindquarters were going. And that becomes quite problematic when you have a brace like through, let's say the shoulders, the ribs, you know, and the back is not coming up like that, you know, then, then they can manufacture like a head going this way, which is exactly what she was doing, particularly to the right. The head's going this way, the hindquarters are going, the left, oh shit, I'm doing it backwards. Okay, this way. The right hind leg is going, and the left hind leg is going out the back. Very difficult to get because this mirror is. And, and so 
the part that needs that the rain needs to like the horse needs to flow away turning loose the entire inside of their body which includes a, a little bit of a raising of the back a little like a completely different feeling okay so that's where i was saying when she is truly turning loose she understands it she understands what she's being asked to do you will not find the brace period yeah. like she just won't let you get to it like i said it's kind of like dead dog even though that's not an ideal analogy because she she still has feeling and energy but it's like if you draw on the rain brrr, it's just gonna go through the body she's you're not gonna find a brace like it just won't be there which we see with bucks horses which we see you know in our ideal situation right where it just goes through the body and actually gary when you say okay so back up let's say that a little bit clearer basically the rope they won't let the rope get tight picture leading up it's a little clearer there the horse is either dragging behind you or coming right up the rope so if you've watched in the insider remy video you had a few of them leading up if you can't kind of trot off not going okay corsi here we go come on come with me and like having them feel your energy and encouraging them but just literally without just ramming into the end of the rope but imagine you're on a saddle horse and you're going somewhere and you just go to trot off is that other horse going to be ready to come up the rope if that rope comes tight or are they going to drag a little so if they're not prepared to go whoa that horse just started trotting the ropes i feel the rope coming tight i i feel i know i've got to get going here before that rope gets tight they're going to push and go right exactly pretty, because, because it's pretty the, concrete they're either coming up the rope prepared there or they're you know in the case of the arab i had i have and the dutch harness thoroughbred where everything was this and then come i mean that was just horrible right off the bat but when they said i've got to be ready again they're moving their own body i'm not driving them forward you know i'm not manufacturing i'm not helping them a lot i'm just going be ready right so that's a little bit more concrete are you going to let the rope get tight yeah and in that case the way that they stay in time and stay up the rope is when they they feel it or or know that it's coming the signal goes to the hind leg yeah that's the thing because if they do all of this and you know want to motor themselves forward with their front legs they, they will not be on time so it's such a great way to to just set it up so that they're like oh yeah i gotta i have to push from from behind um to so come now so now moving to the hind quarters if you can feel it side by side like either feel the change because of the timing and feel you've offered to a horse where it wasn't connected and you kind of went a little bit faster or you're like kind of testing going if i came in here with a lead rope are you gonna let it get tight and either because there's a brace in your head and neck or because we're bending but the hindquarters isn't quite going or and then moments later you either have someone else work with the horse and it's kind of more connected or you get the timing enough that it kind of comes together and you're like oh okay like i came in there the rope wouldn't even like the horse wouldn't let the rope get tight that's right and not because but see that the thing that requires a little feel and a little bit of practice and a little bit of a of a understanding Okay, let me just say the first part. The thing that requires a little bit of practice is is the feeling of not just this lightness that is empty, which is funny because we think about that a lot, you know, when it comes to lateral flexion or longitudinal flexion. Yeah, vertical, whatever. You know, like there's an emptiness, right? Well, you can have an emptiness laterally as well which we all kind of know in the sense that with the, when, if the head and neck bend and the hindquarters doesn't go, 
Okay, yeah, but you can also have an emptiness where the hindquarters do go, right? So that requires yeah. a bit of feel, which is so barfy to say in the sense that, okay, well, what does that mean? And once again, this gets to the hacky sack deal, which we should describe because people are asking about that. And basically what that means is that the foot or the feeling feels a little bit like something. It's not empty. It's not just waving your hands through the air. So about like a hacky sack. So my point is when you, when we're talking about yielding the hindquarters laterally and the horse does not allow the rope to come tight. Yes, that's true. But but it's still not in a well right empty, because, empty way exactly yeah. because it, the person has to be feeling for those sections in the middle you can't just be looking down at the hind legs mm -hmm. even though so, you're... yeah so two two thoughts one for those of you going i don't know the hacky sack to me that's not your strongest and like that doesn't resonate with me as much i get what you're saying i i can see that feel but that I doesn't guarantee you guys in a few years he's gonna be like the hacky sack is so perfect if you... all right whatever <laughs> <laughs> so i i get what you're saying it's just i i don't know that that one keep working you'll come up with a better one right in a few years you'll be you'll be better and you'll be able to communicate it better you'll be what like my hacky sack was perfect i don't know no you're gonna be like okay i have a better analogy and i'll be like yeah see that one that one's better so we'll see who's right in a few years i'm just not gonna admit that i made better you know whatever but anyway so <laughs> keep working emma uh what else was i gonna say uh, well you were oh, so the feeling that you offer the horse it it does feel like you're doing it together it's not just the horse not letting the rope come tight and kind of rushing away from you and i think the reason i referenced a little bit the round crawl and yes again you kind of have to have the horse feeling of you a little bit and that gives the opportunity to kind of see the truth whether they're actually kind of connected to you and moving their own body and if that kind of cleans things up or are they a little empty and whatever is when the horse is moving their own body you see the whole horse but you're right you have to be looking at the whole horse you can't see just the hind leg and that's where again if you're working in it and then it comes together either because you kind of get some timing that shifts the horse or changes the horse and it comes through for you or you see someone else do it or you someone else helps you with your horse and then it comes through a little better you can feel the difference on the lead rope and in terms of the responsiveness behind like but you can also see and it's important to see the whole horse just like be one right nose to tail like you say not looking at the hind leg and <sighs> you could probably describe well i know you could describe there's a brace here and this is how i see it watch it come out this is what it'll look like when that the rib cage swing but that's extremely subtle to look for and you have to like train your eye to see it to me it's easier to see just it looking easy for the horse it looking connected it looking balanced and soft mm -hmm. well i guess too what i'm driving at though before i forget is that and this is kind of new frankly probably like a year ish for me especially in the groundwork to to find this because i found it more under saddle first but the person really has to feel for it and and the, and the reason i keep coming back to that is just because the horse can get light through their head and neck and through their hindquarters and if the person accepts that 
without knowing to feel for the whole horse, then you can quite easily reward the horse for being disconnected, even though it might actually look very nice and very light, right? And you know who I've been thinking about this a lot with is Bonnie. Mm -hmm. I cannot wait to get back to riding her. There's a few more things like connected, <clears throat> basically. I'm I'm super curious. I'll have I'll have a lot more to say about that. But if you guys go back and watch the Bonnie videos, then you will see me hunting for that absolutely at Liberty. But with her, she's a great example of the, her being super light that it's quite difficult to find the middle of the horse connected to the rein yeah. and that's where riding her you you could stabilize like we've done this at your place you know you can stabilize the horse with the outside rein right and then and but once again you you have to as the person be feeling for the middle of the horse which sounds it can sound a little funky just because we're like, okay, well, we need the hindquarters to do everything, but you have to have the middle of the horse in order for the hindquarters to do. To be connected. Yeah. Yeah, it, exactly. And that's where it comes down to the lower back as well. I was yeah. listening to somebody talk that I just super duper respected dressage guy. And he was just referring to the back of the horse where all the information or huge, he didn't say all. He's very particular with his words, I love it. But that is so much the information that we need to operate off of. And of course, that's because the lower back is where, is where we're feeling the hindquarters, you know, come underneath as we're riding. But the same, the same kind of thing will apply if you're feeling for the middle of the horse, because Obviously, that means they can't be leaning on the inside front leg. Okay, so that's way easier to see and influence, like the Buck Channel ones with Billy Bob. You, you could, he's, or even the little reels that I've done. He talks about that. Like, you cannot come on me and lean on the inside rein or, or, or lean on your inside foot. So we can see that and begin to chip away at it. But for it to roll all the way through the horse, I guess what I'm saying is it's really easy to not hunt up that last. And it's really not the last bit. It's like 40% of it. Realistically, right? It really is. But th there's another of your half truths, right? It's like, until you have it as good as Buck, you don't really have it. <laughs> you know, it's not worth anything. I mean, that's kind of what the half, <laughs> where the half truth is difficult. But because it's not really the whole deal right but it's but it's critical pieces that are missing yeah. like critical pieces but you go with what you got and you kind of keep working toward that for sure and and it's you can't have it where the horse doesn't yield the hindquarters you can't have it where they're pulling the rein to the outside you know so so if the horse is turning loose through their you know from their nose to their shoulder okay yes good if they're moving the hindquarters away yes good and this is part of the reason i think drawing them forward and around the arc is is so crucial and works so well because it requires the horse to to step forward 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 with the hind feet so that will in the end start to connect the middle of the horse i'm doing it like this mm -hmm. but you know connect the middle of the horse as they're going longitudinally kind of like it sets them up laterally to to connect longitudinally okay so no finish what you're saying oh, no. there you go. You, this, okay. So with, with Della though, it was yield the hindquarters and draw in because, well, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm assuming because you can say whether or not my evaluation of it is how you'd say it. Um, I'm assuming because in her case, so much of the difficulty was 
as soon as he sent me forward, I go away, rather than the answer being toward me. So a lot of horses, <clears throat> you can go hind quarters, now roll forward and kind of come forward toward me, but toward around, right? You're, you're coming this way rather than away. Um, but with her, as soon as you said go around, she kind of said, okay, here's where I go away. <clears throat> so it was a little bit more putting on the menu, planting the seed that we roll the hindquarters and push, but push toward me. Forward and forward. around. Yes. Forward and around, but here it was forward and toward me first. Come up the yeah, roll. Yeah, but that's forward. because you had no hope of getting her forward and around. Exactly, because then she'd go into the end of the rope immediately. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's our thing. In this case, that's where we had to go. And once again, in dressage land, like you guys are going to have to deal with this for a while. This is, I know, but it's the threads are the threads. Like that just is what it is. Gary's favorite thing. <laughs> so, um, the act activating the hind quarters and and the brilliance of yielding the hind quarter is you do activate them but then you have to send them forward they have to push the horse forward you can't just randomly activate them and not and not do something so that's my point is like when Della was you could not draw her forward and around in time where as there has to be a way to put on the menu and this is the gary's corner when it's like let the lateral bend go through your body and then push, push. yeah and i'm doing it once again and then push i have this hill you guys have seen the hill going up to the coverall right so i feed the horses on the hill and i love getting to watch them because they all you know or they're just pushing themselves up that little slope ears forward beautiful connection you know over their back it's so good for me to see all the time like Davina you know so long long back and like that's kind of interesting because your hill goes like this doesn't it my hand looks so big as soon as I have to like do it closer to my body <laughs> Ooh. Um, your hill goes like this as opposed to it going up on a slope like that right i never thought about that but that's it's like the crest of the hill as it goes up there a little bit as opposed to a slope like mm -hmm. that. yeah it, yeah it's it is the perfect picture what because they push themselves with the hind legs they don't go like that they just don't when they're on a mission to go somewhere then their their ears are forward the pole is the highest point now of course they're a bit on a hill but still it gives you and then the the pushing from the hind legs because they're relaxed and on a mission and now mm -hmm. if they're running around with the tail in the air it's a bit different but you know a bit different <laughs> but like uh, realistically it is so cool to see them operate that way 100 percent on their own so remy Curious question. When you have him kind of turn loose, when you activate the hind end and say, give me a little more, does, given his body style and breed, does his tail still lift or does it stay really relaxed and down? It does not stay really relaxed and down like Prims would, let's say. Uh, because his tail set is super high. However, it absolutely does relax and go down for him. Mm -hmm. And he, I love that I have so many different body styles and I just, it's going to be the ultimate, the ultimate, because I have a vision in my mind how they all should go the same right? The principles are the same. And the general picture is the same. All you have to do is phase in and out of, of the baseline. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I would, I would say that it'll so be even that's curious though. What is, what do you consider baseline? That's, that's something that 
Uh, so, so I have an answer. It's interesting. Yeah. Cause the, when I was like, okay, you need Katniss cause this hurts. Um, when you're here last, the baseline for her still felt so downhill. Right. So the baseline isn't necessarily perfectly even. horizontal horizontal yeah no not not at all necessarily that's really important to know so I you can have let's say there's baseline but then there's also like we're not too baseline yet or we're moving from baseline to being more horizontal and or upright and some horses baseline might be more upright than you know say the next horse is baseline i don't know if we're yeah. baseline might be over here for this horse baseline might be here for this horse 100%. and this horse being more engaged might be here still not baseline for the next horse well, but baseline is basically flat before baseline is strung out and not flat and falling or we right? should define our terms Okay. So we should decide because the way I was thinking of it is, is the baseline is, this is the way I was thinking about it. I think you're thinking of that meaning horizontal and I'm thinking of that being whatever the horse's yeah. natural balance is. Yeah. No, I was thinking the same. I'm, oh, okay. Yeah. Because so that's of course, there's if, it, if this is, you know, let's go this way. We're, we're moving. This is more engaged and this is like way downhill over here. So as we move across, now we're over here and we're more engaged, right? So, you know, dee, 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 Some horses would be here as baseline. This is where they're not necessarily level but horizontal. And, and, but, but not they're strung out. That not that strung out. They're they're balanced yep. enough to yep. go forward flowing yep. right and then to some maintain, horses are just it, never going to be here like this they just wouldn't based on their body style ever be at you know this angle yep based on their body style this is baseline there's already some upward yeah. you know yeah so when you say in and out of baseline Initially, it's or like let's say my, my zipper here is our baseline for whatever horse we're talking about. Initially, we're going well. We're not on baseline, and then we're kind of like we have to keep bringing you back to baseline. But then eventually, it's coming in and out of baseline, and we're on this side. Like we'll go back to baseline, but then we'll That's go right. more engaged. Back. That's right. So That's right. We got to find baseline first, and then from yep. baseline we build. Hundred percent. Yeah. And that's what's so fun about having so many different body styles. And there's a million things we could even talk about within that. But yeah, finding a horse's natural balance is, is definitely coming to the front of my mind in, in something we should talk about. Although we've talked about it a lot. But that could be depending on the horse's body style like their natural body style, which does include an element of, of the belly too. But my definition would be, and we can agree on this perhaps, that their baseline is where they can have life in the rectangle maintaining gait. So not in front of the rectangle, not behind the rectangle. And that would be their working gait, like where they could go for as long as you really need them to. And, but, and again, it's not maintaining gait. Like I was saying last week, and this is a body style thing. And I have quite an interesting mix right now. I have the, the Arab, the Dutch harness horse thoroughbred, That's both of which started very much like my head goes up for all transitions. My when you send me forward or lead me forward, I brace and then go. And they, they're both so much better, so different there. But that still 
kind of where they would go if they get tight rather than you know the answer being forward like the little arab can still get oh this is a little bit and you know it just goes inverted right and it's like no 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 relax get out okay so you have those two and then you have the the fjord and then i have a quarter horse and then i have just the other day got a german riding pony who is very i mean very much novella shaped no not novella um God, you have so many dang horses i don't remember yeah. the one i started not novella um Divina. Big blood. Divina, yes. Okay. So Divina's very more, much um, Divina. Well, like, it, I mean, much Divina's smaller. Ryan pony is not going to have as long of a back as Divina. Divina has a. Very well, yeah. I mean, much smaller, but that's still that scope over the back, you know, shorter frame, obviously, but just big stride, you know, very open feeling, naturally came, comes over her back. Even if she's a little bit tight, it still has this look to it as opposed to. Um, anyway, so <laughs> that's a pretty good mix of body styles right there. Not so as good as mine, but good ish. There's only five, and you have like 45 horses, so you have more gradients in your body styles. <laughs> um, <Jealous. laughs> but feeling for the two in particular that well and Della although I've ridden Della very minimally um but feeling the two that didn't really have a forward because there was so much tension and mm -hmm. um yeah. I think Von Dutch is the um the charter source that's his name uh, which I get a kick out of yeah it's cool um, <laughs> <laughs> that's cool um nina is listened last week to our oh. show so she might be listening again this morning um she's von dutch's owner um that's a cool name she's and she said um her spirit animal is the octopus and we described him last week as an octopus like that's how he started and now he's more flowing anyway um yeah, now she it's like, more like the octopus with all its, you know, see the thing all is its legs lined really up. Like, yeah, but she said she'd rather call him like where he was figuring it all out. She'd rather think of that as an octopus as opposed to unique. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, now he looks less octopusy and unique. Um, holy cow! Yesterday, just a little side note, Nina, if you're listening, um, wow, was he forward? He just he wanted to canter. He just wanted to go, which was super cool for him. I mean, he, like, he's not built to canter, but he was like, let's do this. And it wasn't like, this is what you want. So I'm going to try this. It was, I want to go forward. And we were kind of moving along. We were hand galloping. He actually got spooked at one point and kind of took off. But we came back down without, you know, we, without having to bend him or slow him down. We just leveled out again. But for him to just go, let's do this and feel so forward was really cool. But anyway, back to the baseline body style situation. When you have these two horses that started so up and inverted and um, tending to get tight in their back, feeling for, well, when are we at baseline? Like we can kind of get relaxed, but are we really pushing forward in that relax? Not necessarily, okay, we're back to this. Not necessarily getting here yet, but you know, for them, it is more up or, yeah, but it's or pretty simple, level. It's, it's a very simple. It's, but it's does it feel simple. like it's driving or is their head just down relative to where it was, you know? It doesn't matter to me. The, the way that you determine that is, is just, can they maintain gait? And direction. Like, can they change direction? Well, but that's the thing. They could maintain gait when their head was freaking in the air, too. Well, of course. It didn't yeah, feel good. But, that, but that's not relaxed. Well, I know, but that's what I'm saying. Relaxed and flowing. They can... Yeah. That's I don't right. know. That's right. But but that's, that's going to be different, let's but say. But Brody can maintain gait in this stupid little jog with his head kind of at a, a flat spot. And okay, but that's not 
bass line flowing. That's just like. Doo, 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 doo. Well, it's I, I would, I don't know, my, my picture of what, what we talked about as far as baseline or whatever, I don't know if you were using that term when you were here last, but, you know. Well, but with Brody, I mean, the, the steps can be pretty small. You got to sit up there and think and feel for the back being contracted or not. But if his back is turned loose, like if there's n nothing squashed, longitudinally in his back like so if his back is free in other words the muscles are not tight anywhere then maybe that is his baseline you know it, yeah absolutely and then and then depending on how he's written with which for him his his life purpose is to help people so he's not going to adjust his baseline as much as some horses but it, like when you first start it's going to be one thing. And then as, as the horse develops, it's going to be another thing. I'm thinking of rooster mm -hmm. like, and his, he really had to play with his head, you know, super down and, but they're not going, they're not going to, they're not going to insist upon having their belly down. That's that. And so long as the belly isn't down once again with Remy, his, you know, he has a little Arab shape. That's, that's what it is, right? So his belly is not going to come crunch up and his back's going to come up like a bow right away. But there's a difference be between like how he's operating naturally, which looks way different than let's say Zorro, who, who looks very <laughs> baroque, of course, like he's the most extreme example. Well, so Zorro's back is going to go like that naturally. And then when he gets disturbed, which is, which can absolutely happen, then suddenly there's this the bow in his lower back. But with Remy, it's just, it, it definitely has a little bit of a more, you know, of a shape that, that is, is different. So the belly isn't even necessarily going to be above his, um, well, his hip. Well, his hip right it might it might even be just a tiny bit down so if this is his tail like this and his hip is tipped like this his belly might be a little bit down here come for now and then we'll see this is the experiment then what does it become but the horse but even him this is what i'm saying i'm not doing like imagine my watch is his tail right so even even him he's not going to purposefully break like that because he he cannot operate there's a place where it is harder for them to operate than when he even though it's not going to look like that to begin with well and i guess so leaving brody aside for a moment thinking of von dutch like so I, you know i said a bit ago like they can maintain gait. And this is why I feel like it needs to be qualified. They can maintain gait with their head up in the air. I mean, they can just tool around there, but it still doesn't feel. Can they though? Can they? Like, probably not. Honestly. It doesn't, but it's, it's kind of like the lateral connection nose to tail, like the whole horse being there versus our legs are pushing us forward, but it's not. Yeah, but they're know. not going to maintain gait is the thing. They're just not going to. And, and let alone be able to change direction. Like, so you could say, okay. Well, my okay, so that, that was another thing. <coughs> and then you we said, have some comments, so I'll, we'll get to those, you guys. Keep them coming. I can read them, so. So when you say, <laughs> it's so funny. Um, because like what's baseline and what's half truth um that's another like if they're yeah ignore that for a second forget i said that um but when you're saying baseline how much is the baseline is it yawn and whatever the airplane where it yeah 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 and, yeah, and I don't know. I don't know what 
anyway. Or somebody knows, but yeah, yeah. Well, one is side to side and one is front to back, right? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But you've used the ship mast. Yeah. You know, for, you know, or like a bicycle turn versus, you know, kind of going out and around. Sail straight, uh, that's how I say it. Sail straight, yeah. So how much of that is involved in baseline? Like, does baseline have to be? Oh, yeah. What Obviously, degree? Baseline is lateral, certainly laterally balanced on all four feet. Certainly. Because if they are out in the, uh, if they're sound, right? If they're sound, and it, I suppose they get like a kink or fall or something like that. But if they're sound, then when they're just tootling around on their own, they're, they're going to be balanced laterally. Otherwise, they would wipe out. <clears throat> mm -hmm. that, that's how I'm thinking. I mean, you don't see a horse going around on its own with its ear like this. Yeah, but I'm thinking, you know. Unless it's raining, then my horses are like. Yeah. Yeah, Marchie would uh, hate it. I had this warm blood that just hated rain in his ears. Oh, he just hated it. Diga Digama doesn't like wind wind and rain where it's coming. He's like, Into his, yeah, you like. <laughs> he's like, oh, is it? I don't know, what did that remind me of? Anyway, um, I think. Yaw and pitch. See, Val knew. And Val, yeah, and pitch. We should totally incorporate those Val. Stuff. Did you look that up or did you yeah. actually know it? She probably knew it. Tell me when you're ready. If to she knows it, I'm gonna be like super impressed because she's always like nailing the definitions. But I'm I wanted to know, Val, you gotta like say I looked this one up versus I knew this one off the top of my head. And Val, so this morning, the oh, yaw is left to right, the yeah, I think so. And, then, and pitches front to back, but I I don't know. Val will have to comment. Oh on that. my god, it'd be so cool if we could. Cause pitch, you know, you could pitch a tent, you could pitch a fit, you could like. There's a but. We'll, let's say it as front to back. Like we'll we'll say it as vertical flexion. So for energy, yeah, energy probably. So on the the how I wish I could remember what it was. Where Julie's here hanging out with the kids while emily's doing law school and i'm working whatever so um this morning we were walking up to take the kids to the bus and i can't remember what it was but lydia's said something about you know why did julie say this and i said that and i said that's because julie's smarter than me and lydia thought that was pretty cute <laughs> i don't remember what it was but Olivia. It's kind of, it's kind of like Val's like Val's smarter than me. Well, she but says to... she used to fly planes. <laughs> oh well, there you go. I didn't not know a that. surprise. I did yeah. not know that. Yeah, not I didn't either. But not okay. Surprised. All right, so Val's done a lot of things. Val has had a very, yeah, mm -hmm. pretty crazy. I I didn't know that one. I already thought they were like so. Anyway. Comments? Comments. Okay. So Val says, per my notes, and so Val, uh, what notes? Uh, notes from this show or, or notes some, from somewhere else? Per my notes, I have three ba baselines for a horse. Natural movement, finding the horse's natural balance, and life in the rectangle, maintain gait. Yeah. Yeah. All three? The only thing the I would say thing? is, yeah, the natural balance and natural movement. But she's right in terms of, I think if the horse is in a natural balance, that's probably all we need to think about. And then we get to just observe what their movement is. Right? Like, you know, it could have lots of knee action or it could be, could be sort of, chin out to start with a little bit, you know. Um, so, wow, what is, what is she saying? Oh, look at that. 
from this discussion. She said, okay. And then she also said to me, baseline is a starting point. <laughs> this conversation has a dynamic base. How can you a dynamic? No, a dynamic baseline. The baseline was the baseline. Yeah. But so, I think what she's saying uh, though, is it, is it adjusts? Then that's exactly right. So if you're riding a horse consistently, their, their baseline, their natural balance is going to be different year over year. But that's why we have to ride with feel and be like, okay, this is, this is a natural balance. And to me, watching Gary ride Colts and how he can basically find, I don't know if this is the right way to say, but find their highest and best natural balance. To begin with, because that's the caveat, right? Is we can start to choose what we like and emphasize what we like and the horse will adjust really quickly. Corey had a question. Oh, I bet you she's at school already. Dang. Um, I, I, this relates to the rising trot versus sitting trot. You guys that are in Horsemanship Insider will see that on, I think, the novella video. Um, what were you going to say about the natural balance, Michael? It looked like you had a thought. Yeah, <clears throat> I'm just back to the lateral balance <clears throat> as part of the natural baseline. And I mean, if we're saying that's maintained gait, I mean, Rooster was also yesterday, which I've been writing Rooster now. Um, I have a little Maybe more help. Two months. I know, exactly. <laughs> Ooh, every time I, I ride, I'm like, there's so much potential here. I just need to ride the damn horse. Um, <clears throat> but, I mean, he was, he would have cantered all day at one point. I mean, he's just like, this is great. This is fun. Let's go. Maintain gait 100%. But we were still pitched in on the on the ends of the arena going right. That's yaw. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yawed in. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, is that baseline or are we, we can't find baseline until we're balanced left to right? I mean, I... I don't know. Yeah, but the thing is that, that, of course, whenever we change direction, we are going to challenge the horse's balance, their natural balance. That's always going to be the case uh, whenever we are influencing the horse. That's yet another reason why the round pen is so handy, <clears throat> because we can turn them loose and do some things so that we they can find their natural balance on their own so we can check that out first and then put a saddle on them and then repeat because the saddle disturbs their natural balance usually mentally and emotionally more than anything else you know so i think i think that when I say, maybe we should just say, when I say that they're, the horse's natural balance, I definitely think that firstly, it is relating to horizontal balance. You got to find that first, you know, where they go, how they go naturally across the, the ground, back to front. At which speed which has to do with, you know, how their hind legs are going underneath them, you know, right away on a loose rein. Then when you start to make changes of direction, then you see another element there, and that would be the lateral balance. I'm really trying to sort out. But you're saying, so you're saying changing direction. I mean, following rain certainly required certainly helps right but you're saying changing direction without any need to say rebalance the outside that's a component or a requirement of their natural balance 
Yeah, I, w I guess I would just say right away that's starting to ask them to do something, to make a shape. And so we might need to help. Yeah, and, and to be aware also that a horse in a longer frame, naturally in a longer frame, naturally a little bit um, downhill, they're going to be challenged making smaller shapes, which is why the Noah's Ark works really, really well. Once the horse is turned loose and in their natural balance and willing to stay in the rectangle, then you just start to make some shapes and they just start to adjust themselves to, to continue to make it easy. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, this feels easy. Yeah. So now find that again using the arcs. Which is why, you guys, the, the novella, Michael, it's like two and a half minutes long. The novella warm-up. Just watch the trim one. Leave me alone. You do? Aw, isn't she so cute? She is. She does look like Zorro. <laughs> I know. I see her in the barn. I'm like, oh my god. And this is going to be clutch for us. Because it will be yet another, and, and a good body style. Not quite as Baroque as novella right but but very nice shape naturally so it's on me if i mess it up for sure you can see naturally she's she's super fancy um and it's going to be up to me to take her natural balance and develop it over time and she really doesn't know much at all so it's going to be great but so that is why using the arc to basically set it up and let the horse find a little bit of a of um, packaging is, is what I say, but to, but to adjust their natural way of going, to improve it so that they can accommodate a shape. And you can do that on with big arcs at first. And then once you really start to shorten the rectangle, then you then you are going to be talking to them about like, oh, a little bit don't lean here, a little bit roll the jaw, a little bit don't lean up. Because when they lose their balance, they're going to do things like push the ribs into your leg or, you know, brace a little bit on, you know, the reins won't feel even. Or maybe, maybe start to drop their back a little bit so the hind legs go out the back of the rectangle. That's why, too... I'm always saying it has to be the hind legs. You've got to think about the hind legs. You have to ride the hind legs forward. And that doesn't mean, you know, driving or whacking or, or anything too dramatic, but you need to reward that because otherwise it's just not going to work, which is yet another reason you cannot just randomly pull on the reins. The whole thing is just a disaster if, if you do that. So this is another thing that I'm thinking about lately. How much time do we have? Because this is a whole nother. Can't, maybe I shouldn't go there quite yet. Yeah, we have 15 minutes, but Julie says she's not oh. smart than Michael. She just has awareness what aunties and uncles are. Oh, that's right. That's what it was. So, yeah. She asked Lydia. Lydia said my uncle, and she said, so is it your mom's dad or your or your mom's brother or your dad's brother or mom's brother's husband and, and she just rattled it off real quick and i'm like wow i wouldn't have come up with that that quick i would have to think of what are all the options and, and um lydia said well why is that or something and i said well it's because julie's smarter than me so yeah that's what it was uh now i've been distracted what was my thought uh no i just don't want to leave quite this conversation before launching into um, this other one. Uh, because I'm thinking. Well, we should ask the gang if they have any comments or questions. Well, I, I have one more thought on it or one more kind of thing to talk about. I'll often when doing Noah's arcs, if there is a distinct imbalance one side to the other or let's say Brody for example <clears throat> picking up the right rein it's very kind or Chelsea's here and she has her um, Badlands horse Mustang and picking up that 
upright rein. Like it's very connected to the front foot, but it's not round picking up the front foot. Going to the right. Yeah, going to the right. Go, going to the right. Inside and, rein. Okay. Yeah. Inside rein going to the right. And so I was telling Chelsea or there's someone else too. There's like three horses lately. I've been thinking of this. It's like, don't talk to the inside front foot to make your turns unless not unless and like you have to emphasize the inside hind stepping under or flexion as a part of that because just practicing reaching the front foot to the inside with your horse straight or even slightly counterbent is counterproductive right so let's say you're going to the right and you go to do your Noah's arcs and you're trotting and you pick up your right rein and you're trying to get a bend, but the more you bend, the more they just kind of lean in on that shoulder. And so it's like, well, let's experiment with the size of the arc. But once it's like at a certain point, it's so far gone, like you're gonna try to bend them and you kind of have to just softly roll them into a hind quarter yield and get them rebalanced up into the outside because no amount of trying to shorten up that arc is going to help them get there or if you don't if you're not going to roll into a hind quarter you have to go okay let's reset start again rebalance go the other way try to come back to it and it feels like at times to get that bend to the right to come through you almost have to kind of draw the rein kind of and obviously a lot of this can be worked out just doing hind quarter yields and getting a balanced walk a little leg yield at the walk even saying you know i need to bend to the to the left but that's what i was saying don't keep reaching that or reaching that right front foot um and not getting some flexion with it too to where you're actually picking it up and setting it down as opposed to just kind of falling it to the inside so i don't know well, I, that's why <clears throat> you need a little bit of the ability to have a soft feel to really use the Noah's Arcs. And what I mean by that is you need to, two things. First of all, the inside rein needs to be able to roll the jaw. Yes. And you need you get 100%, right? And, and to create some concavity because as you're saying, you think about the inside hind leg coming across, what you're really probably saying is making sure that the ribs swing away because on a big, big arc, you know, like a 20 meter circle or something like that, you could, or like an arc the size of a 20 meter circle, then, then, you know, there's not going to be a ton of stepping over with the inside hind leg, but what you certainly can feel is are the ribs, like when you pick up the right rein, to move right okay. foot to the right, yeah, then are the ribs sticking under your right leg? Well, they shouldn't be, right? Mm -hmm. And that is exactly what's happening if the horse is losing the bend, for sure, right? Mm -hmm. So then the question is, what do you need to do? Do you need to do your, use your outside rein to stabilize the outside of the horse and make sure that the horse knows they're not just diving to the inside? Mm -hmm. You know, there's because we have to think, okay, well, we have to be balanced at the same time. And I'm not asking you to give to my left leg. That's where we have to have some awareness of like, is the horse in the rectangle or are they squeezing mm -hmm. out in all sorts of different places? So I would say, you know, can you use the outside rein to say, hey, come around? But the inside rein has to be working, which it exactly, as you say, is where a whole bunch of the fix could be in the hind quarter yield to the left mm -hmm. so that the horse rolls. But <clears throat> have to have it turning loose the horse from the shoulder to the lower back as well, mm -hmm. or the, the shoulder to the hip as well. Otherwise, that won't help at all. <laughs> which we're right back to yeah. the very beginning of our conversation. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and that's what I've been helping Chelsea with. So, well, what do you think, you know, all of what we just said, rolling the jaw and so like Brody, and there's been a couple of lessons lately where I hopped on and I'm like, you just need to expect more of him because if, if you just let him do what he's going to do, he's not going to 
try for you. He's not going to adjust himself. And, you know, in fairly short order, I get on him and I scissor my legs and I have this nice through the whole horse arc. But if, you know, generally speaking, if someone else is riding him without making some of the adjustments I'm making right away as soon as I get on, he'll go to the right, but he's not really arced to the right. So, um, let me see. Let's try not to lose my train of thought. Okay. So he can roll the jaw. Like, absolutely can roll the jaw. He can rebalance the outside. He can do all of those things. But if, as you, and it's not as bad as I'm going to make this sound. If, as you pick up your right rein, he's kind of been in a pattern of not doing that. He hasn't been turning loose through the whole horse connected like we were talking about at first in the hind quarter yield or really connectedly following that rein a little bit of reaching the foot but with a little bit of kind of stiffness or straightness in there where he's not feeling that rein and going i i'm not going to let it get tight i'm going to follow it with my front foot right and like front end reaching more than the hind or, or whatever then you go to do Noah's arcs and he'll get to where he's just kind of goes, well, we're going this way, but I'm going to really lean to the right. And at a certain point, even with him, it's like, it's too far gone. You can't tighten up the arc. But if in that case, I was riding him as opposed to someone else who's kind of just figuring this out, I might go, well, <laughs> even if I haven't kind of fixed it up el elsewhere, I'm going to take that rein and kind of draw him into a smaller arc right away saying no seriously bend here so we can go out and around whereas if i just pick up that rein and say oh let's take this you know kind of larger arc he's gonna go yeah and you know so, if I so at times i'm like bend him deeper to like not let him go there or or even in the hindquarter yield don't go out for so long or come around so slowly that the horse bogs into the left or to the right. Sorry, I'm trying to do this correctly. Bogs into the right with their shoulder before you get them bent enough to roll the hindquarters. All right, which again is right back to our earlier conversation. Like when they feel that rain, do the, does it go right through the horse of the hindquarters and stand on the outside? If it's not, you have to make sure that the way you're even presenting that hindquarter yield or the, in prep for say, Noah's arcs, or if you're doing Noah's arcs and they have that tendency, you have to be feeling, well, what size of arc and kind of how quick in a way do I need to get there to say, let's get here rather than have you, you know, you get what I'm saying? And well, of course, and, and you yeah. For being able to use the outside rein, yeah, to, to talk to the outside front foot, yeah, essentially is is super key, and that's where you can because the leg yieldy feel or you guys, I think we did this with you guys the very first year I was there because we had to fix up some hindquarter yields first so mm -hmm. that they weren't on the inside uh, front foot. But it's just the same as on the ground. You'd be like, not here. Mm -hmm. so, and that wouldn't just be the shoulder or the neck, you know, that would also be the ribs. And usually to me, that's, it's very quick that you, you know, if I were to get on Brody and I was going to the right and hit, and he was leaning on the right front foot, you know, I'd go to roll the jaw to the right. And then I'm using my left rein to say, out, out, out. <laughs> No, off my inside leg, because <clears throat> that's for not inside leg in terms of yielding the hindquarters, yeah. inside leg in terms of yielding the ribs, you ribs. know, right at this at the girth. Yeah, and then and then he would turn loose. Whoops, he would turn loose to the right, and then you'd ride him forward and around. Mm -hmm. I mean, just having ridden him, I I know that's and that's a lot of times what I would go to. If, if all the pieces are there, which they are with him, and you, mm -hmm. you should only be doing Noah's arcs by the time, you know, you can have those tools available. Otherwise, 
and just generally, you know, having the horse follow a rein. You know, maintain gait, maintain direction. Kind of, but but once again, we get back to the idea of baseline. Because yeah. how I, if they're how, just following a rein, maintain gait, maintain direction is that baseline. Yeah. Or do you and, have and, to get them balanced laterally using no, the arch? That's, that's a good point. Yep. So I would say that the baseline longitudinal length is what determines how the shape of your arc, what it can be at baseline. Ah, uh, so they can only make a certain size circle perhaps at baseline without it challenging their balance. Okay, so do horses moving out and about only make a certain size circle at baseline yeah. balance? Of course. That's why I went, think about when I've ridden the horses down there or when I was riding Candace, I would, she can make a 20 meter circle. She's, she can make a 20 meter circle. So we would do all these things to get her to her baseline longitudinally to turn loose, maintain gait, maintain direction, be longitudinally free. And then we have to accept whatever that was. If you recall, you know, her head was quite low at that time. But yeah, then it was like, we cannot make a 20 meter circle. In fact, we can't even make the corner of the long side or the, to, to go along the short side at first. But that's okay. You just use, you use whatever so straight line you have to find, you know, to find the piece in the rectangle on the straight. Yeah. Absolutely. And this is the brilliance of the hind quarter yield to forward and around is you can kind of set that up so that the horse can start to motor around an arc. Yeah. And by the time they can walk, trot, canter a little bit, continuing to come forward and around on a 12 foot lead rope or shorter at the end of a McCarty, but let's just say that a 10 or 12 foot lead rope, well, then they do have the ability to be balanced laterally. They're probably going to find some short, I mean, they for sure are going to find a shortening of the rectangle in order to make that shape. But like, for instance, Rooster, when he, he, so Michael's big thoroughbred, you know, his, his natural balance, I would say his rectangle is like 13 feet long or 12 feet long or something. Like it's long, right? So he is for sure going to have to shorten the rectangle way shorter than his natural balance would be to do to you know trot or canter around you on a small arc that's why people would say oh it's too small for the horse you know they can't make that small of a circle yet on a very very green horse or a colt it's like well they totally can if they just have it, they can do it on their own. You cannot squash them into that. That's the brilliance of, of the groundwork, in my opinion, is you start to be able to develop them longitudinally really, really early. And then hopefully all of that is there. But yeah, absolutely. I, I love that you said that because that helps me to be like, oh, okay, this is its angle. Then that determines how much. But see, we don't want any yaw. We don't want any yaw at all, like ideally, because we want them balanced yeah. on all four feet. Yeah. Oh no, if our our stupid thing got messed up again. You guys, I don't know why. Look at look at our deal. What our deal? Oh, I don't. Yeah, I don't know why. Now Facebook is giving us trouble. I know. They just Back to Instagram, everybody. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully they got their <laughs> crap together. I don't to know. Uh, it would be so nice. I love doing it on Instagram, but anyway. Um we are over. Oh no, we're exactly on time. But is there are, are there any other thoughts? Yeah, I would say. Well, I, would, I don't know. I'm going to be thinking about this lateral balance in terms of length of the rectangle. Right. Yeah. Because for you take it, the extreme examples like Katniss, let's just say. 
she's not especially a long horse, but she is, you know, a, a ranch style quarter horse. So she's not super, she's not super downhill, but she doesn't naturally motor herself around like Zorro does. So the arcs that she can successfully make, maintaining gait, maintaining direction on her own are a certain length versus if someday she could do canter pirouette without any yaw, you know, her rectangle has to be squashed way shorter and her hocks have to be squashed way shorter and her mm -hmm. head and neck have to be way higher to make, you know, so that really comes down to the length of the rectangle. Yeah. That was funny on her. I got her partly because I have, she's out of the same mare of a gelding I was riding out in Virginia. That was so, I mean, he, he was very naturally uphill. I mean, his, his baseline was, you know, <laughs> pretty up and very, I mean, wish I would, well, <laughs> been asked to come out several times i should get out there and it'd be fun to ride him again and <clears throat> with, see how sure see what i can do with it now but uh so yeah i was, I was kind of hoping where we get with katniss but you, you'll yeah. take her there but she's just not naturally gonna move if she would if you'd put the two side by side running across the pasture it would have been a totally different picture and there's nothing, the thing, the cool thing is this where Isaac and I were talking about on the Sunday special is like, it, it, so much of this is the, the value is metaphysical, right? We're just using this, this physical experience to, to get us there. And so for me, it's just as fun to be riding Katniss for sure as, as it is to ride Zorro. Nobody's as fun as Novella. Don't tell any of the others that. I know, she's, she, I'm telling you, for me. Yeah, I hope, I hope she just. I think, you, I think it's because the horse is the right size for you. <laughs> because honestly, I think that's one of the fun things about Rooster. And people say that every time I'm on him, someone will say, that's the first horse I've seen you on that it looks like your leg fits the horse. And it, there's probably something to that where it's like, I, I feel like we're proportional, you know? Yeah. I felt that with Vivian too, that she was the first small horse that <clears throat> I, I developed and, and super fun, the most fun for sure at the time. Novella is even more fun. Even it more is, funner. If that's even possible. Yeah, there's a, there's a bunch, I think there's a few reasons. First of all, she's super, super comfortable to ride. Um, and naturally gifted. And has the mind that is quite demanding for me to be on it, mm -hmm. you know, and to, and to win her over. <clears throat> Anyway, but Katniss, super stoked. Super stoked. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. But she's a great example for sure. Last year, a great example for like, look, this is her baseline. You cannot force her to be different than this right now, which is why mm -hmm. in the end, if that baseline was hurting your neck, that's why it was the end of the line. Because because there was nothing you were going to do to force her to be different. And start there. <clears throat> yeah, ex exactly. And, and that is the, the beginning and the end of the story for why we had to tr trade. Yeah, because, and, and that happens. That is a real thing that a person's anatomy and the horse's anatomy, it does not work. Lucky for me. Lucky for you. <clears throat> All right. Anything else, you guys? I feel sad that our video messed up. So I don't know. No idea why. I don't. I really don't, you guys. I just do not know why it would change. I don't know what to tell you. Anyway. Were there, Lucia, were there more is it Lucia. Lucia, right? Lucia says great discussion on lateral balance. Yeah. Did you have any other thoughts on that? 
Um, yeah, Lucia, does that make sense? Like the length of the rectangle is going to determine um, a horse's natural capability. Speaking of which, I was thinking about this because I've been watching a lot of this, this dressage rider that I really like coaching and like, it, it's just so sweet to have found him because then I get to watch a lot of these horses. And you know, one of the things that as, as we're developing dressage horses, like in dressage land, one of the things they don't do is allow the horse to just flop all around and be losing its balance all the freaking time. Now, when you watch Buck or Gary, the horses are not losing their balance all the time either. But like, I feel like, for instance, if you watch Novella's videos, then you could see I let her lose her balance here and there. Whereas if she was being developed like through the, through a more um, official, I don't know, whatever, that, that system, you know, you would stay connected on two reins. Not, that shouldn't mean pulling them in, but, but you just see young dressage horses, if they're going through with talented hands, they're not, you, you know, falling all over the place because they do it in order and they're so mindful about that whole process. Now, that's not always the case when, if, if it's not the, the most talented, but I, I was watching this guy coach his students and then watching some folks more in our land and and it was just stark how much the horses were losing their balance all the time in our land and they cope with it is the thing like they, they learn to be responsible on their own but I just wonder if there's some sort of middle we could we could probably move a little bit more towards being more timely, doing less sooner instead of more later. Yeah, well, that's the that's the goal. I mean, like you said, Buck and Gary, you don't see their horses losing their balance all that much. Or them, you know, there's it's just helping in time. It's right. making it's making sure right back to the beginning of our conversation that it's connected through the whole horse, and because of your timing and because that's all you've. You've always affected or influenced that change when they were out of balance to get them connected, not let them trend down that road because of the way you presented it and allowed them to either lean or be empty or whatever, you know. Yeah, and, and for sure. And not taking the time to train our eye and not taking the time to watch our horses rain by rain. Like these are all, if we're going to be equestrians, you guys, this is legit. You have to study a bit. Me too. Right? Because you can't just study it all at once and then go on your merry way for 20 or 30 years. This is impossible because you have to be comparing it to your, your um, experience. But the good part is when we talk about balance, we can also talk about whatever our current baseline is as a horseman. Like, okay, I get my horses this balanced in the ride, whatever. You get a, 10 acorns or something for your level, your baseline. And then you maybe chip away at it. You could get what one we, more. What are we, squirrels? Yeah. Bitcoin. <gasps> Bitcoin. You had so many Bitcoin. No, nobody can afford any Bitcoin now. Did you see the prices at like 45000 <laughs> Buy some sats, you guys. That's my recommendation. Anyway, the point is we get so many points. Yeah. Where we could assign a, a certain number of, of uh, what Nathan would, would love it if I were to say, a, a, an account of value. Bitcoin. An accounting of value. So however we would want to account for our value, then just saying this for myself too it's like the goal is in the next few months i get a little better mm -hmm. and my horses lose their balance a little bit less or with prim just starting over like so the so the last horse i did that was clean ish was novella right so how many years ago was that two years ago or something like that i mean like okay next let's hopefully have a have a little bit better job this time mm -hmm. around 
And you guys helped me so much because obviously getting to coach you guys zones my eye in like way more than I can see when I'm riding. Like I, mm -hmm. now that I, we have such a good, um, you know, shared language, then I get to watch the result across the arena, which is super valuable for me too. Cool. Anything. Michael's mind is going now to the degree that no words are going to come out. Is that right? Yeah, I'm thinking about all the, all the three days worth of things I'm going to try to get done today. Good luck. Yeah, it's not going to happen. I oh, do you, want, do you want a dog update real quick before we go? Sure. <laughs> not really. I'm sure these guys do. So Spruce, the puppy the eight month old puppy, it was just going to be too much, Michael. And he was so good. He was so perfect, so perfect and clean and like was sleeping through the night and just doing everything. And the thought of then having to lock him in a kennel or, or in his crate, like during the day while I was, while I'm gone, it's just, it was, I couldn't bear it, which sucked because we both really, really liked the dog, but the puppy is just, wasn't going to be the deal for me I, my gut said it and you know anyway it was such a cool dog it hurt my heart so bad every day he was getting better and more interesting but then I um took him up to the arena with me while I was gonna ride <laughs> and I'm doing groundwork with Novella he hooks onto her heels and he went from being afraid to be in the barn the first day, you know, when I'm like, come on, Spruce, you can do it. You can hang out in here. It's fine. To he's ready to boss her around. And he was on her heels. And I'm like, oh, no. So in order to adjust that behavior, we would have, you know, would have been a thing, right? And might as well get him to someone who is looking for that kind of a dog because he would be a star because he'd be an awesome house dog and an awesome working dog. Anyway, bottom line is um, we got him to the working dog rescue in uh, Redmond, Oregon. So over by Bend and within a day she had him neutered, microchipped and in an, a foster home that was like super excited to have him. So heartbreaking kind of, but also the right thing to do for sure because to squash that in him just to suit my lifestyle was, was just not going to feel good. So Kip and I both agreed. So then there was a border collie named Winnie, nine years old, didn't want to work cattle, just like a couch potato that I also saw on Craigslist. However, she was in Hepner. Do you know where Hepner is? Out the gorge. You got to drive all the way out the Columbia Gorge from Portland to Lucia, if you're still listening, so all the way out to, she knows, I'm sure, all the way out to Boardman, and then a little bit south, so five and a half hours away, but I had talked to the guy, and he was like, oh my gosh, you are so perfect for this dog, so I went and got her yesterday. Winnie, uh, I'll put up a picture. Um, she's sleeping on the couch right now, which Spruce would have done too, but then he would have needed to, like, spend the day doing things, but. Anyway, Winnie thinks she's she's the one that's going to stay here. So I hope Spruce has an awesome life. And Kip and I are both like, we'll see you in 10 years, buddy. <laughs> Come back to us when you're ready to retire. So anyway, he would have been perfect for you. You. I yeah. If I had the time to foster that, then kind of the same ish situation. Plus, Sadie would be disappointed, I think. No. Anyway, that's yeah, the story. It's, that it's an interesting thing, waiting, you know, when to get the puppy or when to get the next dog. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure I know the best timing on that or what the best timing for me. I mean, I think it's different for everybody. What their goals sure. are. Sure. What their dogs are. So. Yeah. All right. Well... Thank you, everybody, for tuning in this morning. Super, super interesting discussion, and I know that we will continue, continue it. If you think of whatever else you were going to jump off into, Michael, um, 
you can call me because I am riding today. So, yep. Sounds good. All right, everybody. Well, we'll see you next Thursday morning at 6.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. 8.30 Central. Bye, everybody.